What's going on, y'all? Stacey Davis. Stacy Davis. Welcome to MTV Cribs. <laughs> now, nah, I invite y'all to spend the day with me. Let's go. Where are we going now? Uh, we're about to head to Alshon, grab some food for uh, Molly's birthday. Uh, Molly's birthday is actually, what's today, Tuesday? So it is tomorrow. And uh, we're gonna have a little dinner, so I'm gonna have to chef something up. But yeah, we're gonna head to Alshon for a little bit and get to the apartment after that and get to cooking. Uh, this is the only city that I've ever been in where, session? Yeah, session, where there is a railroad in the middle of the street. So it makes it a little uh, difficult uh, when you're making turns and stuff. But other than that, it's okay. But it's definitely easy to drive home. It's a lot of highways back where I'm from. So it's not a, uh, so it's pretty easy driving. Can you tell us, uh, everybody about your hometown? What what is the name of this, and you know, what are your memories about about this hometown? Yeah, so uh, my hometown is Phoenix, Arizona, specifically a city called Levine. Mm -hmm. uh, when we first moved there, because I was born in San Diego, but when we first moved there, it stunk because there was we it was a bunch of farms next door. Mm -hmm. So uh, there was cows, there was manure, there was basically doo-doo everywhere and uh that was probably my first memory of the city but other than that you know since i've been living there since i was a kid uh i have a lot of good memories with you know my family my friends i think it's a you know it's been a solid place to grow up um i was exposed to a lot of different cultures there especially ones that i wasn't used to uh, but yeah it's been good it's it's that's where i kind of get my affinity for being hot I'd much rather be hot than cold. <laughs> like I can't, I can't do the cold. But you put me in some hot weather, but, and I'm good but, to go. But you need to live in Szczecin, and winter it was strong at the beginning. Right now it's a little bit better. Yeah. So how how you survive this? No, uh, frozen days. I don't know. You know, I don't know. The crazy thing is, Thomas told me that this winter, uh, this wasn't even cold, and to me, I was freezing. <laughs> so um, I don't know, man. You know, just put on a coat and. Don't go outside. The only time I go outside is when I need to get groceries. And as you'll see, I try to get groceries at the beginning of the week and call it a day. So my time spent in the cold weather was very minimal. Um, I'm gonna need some lemons, but I'm gonna need more than three. You know what? Let's just get six. <laughs> so I told them about the mangoes. If you guys haven't tried them, these are the best mangoes in all of Poland. And Oshon didn't pay us for... No, uh, this is not an ad. This right here is the holy grail of barbecue sauces. <laughs> I'd pay $10 to have this, and I'm grateful that it's not. This is like less than $10. Less than 10 for sure. It's All right, we're done. Yeah, so we're gonna make some uh, Turkish dish called zaluk. Um, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but I've had this before, I've made this before, it's really good. I'm gonna, you know, you just need some tomatoes, some tomato paste, eggplant, some garlic, your spices some olive oil, some water, and we're gonna have it with some fish, and I'm going to toast some bread, so let me turn the oven on. So, so you told me before that it would take like 10 minutes? Yeah, and you can also have it with these, some bruschetta, so. So can you say something more about your uh, love, love to cooking, because I, I you know, follow you on Instagram and I saw that you like you like this. Yeah, I, uh, it's just, um, honestly, it, it's, it's really just, I like to be in uh, control of just uh, what I'm putting into my body. Mm -hmm. And I know that, you know, for somebody like me, especially somebody that's like struggle with their weight, um, it's imperative for me to just really be smart about what I'm making and stuff like that. And on top of that, it's like, fun um, gives me something to do gets me off the couch and 
I think it's important. I think it's important for people to um, cook. You know, the act of cooking is, I feel like a lost art. Uh, favorite dish to make will probably be vodka pasta. Uh, and I usually make it, I'll make it with like mussels or some shrimp or um, some salmon. Mm -hmm. um, I also make a really good, uh, a good Alfredo salmon pasta mm -hmm. um, that's like vegan, so I don't use actual milk in making mm -hmm. it. I use like almond milk and stuff, so um, that's really good. And then also, I really like um, curry, mm -hmm. like chicken curry. I really like chicken curry. So. Okay. But in your home, what what was your what what you like eat the most? Oh, my mom, my mom would. <laughs> cook like, uh, she would make like this tomato salmon dish uh, that was always really good. She would make that and then like on Thanksgiving and stuff, her potato salad was like to die for. So <laughs> uh, that and my pops, he would make crazy ribs. Like he had this like his own little barbecue sauce that he would make um, that was just incredible. Can you tell us something more about about your dad because I heard that he was also a basketball player yeah he was a he was a basketball player he was from Philly uh, Philadelphia and uh, he was a basketball player um, he's pretty good and he ended up going to the Navy um, mm -hmm. straight out of high school so um, he, he played basketball in the Navy but you know it brought him from the East Coast to the West Coast brought him to San Diego Mm -hmm. uh, where he obviously uh, my mom and then boom first my sister was born and then me so this is this was why you started playing basketball you know what's crazy I actually liked football first um, football you mean American football yeah American football not uh, you need to watch all your language here in Poland yes I definitely need to watch my language uh, yeah so f football not soccer yeah. uh, as we call it But um, yeah, that was my first love. And the thing was with that, it was kind of tough because as a kid, I was always bigger than the kids my age. Mm -hmm. And with football, growing up, even flag football and tackle football, they would go by weight. So um, instead of me being with my age group, they wanted me to be with like kids that were three, four years older than me. And football being a as much of a contact sport as it is, mm -hmm. my mom was like, yeah, that's a no-go. Like that, she was like, that's not happening, I'm not putting my baby. Okay, so how it started, how you started to play basketball? Uh, so I was playing football, and then um, I think one day I went to like my dad's friend's house and he just had like a basketball hoop at his house, and I was just shooting around, and I just kind of fell in love with it after that, especially because I couldn't really play football, so, Um, you know, basketball was just a little bit more accessible. You know, you go to a basketball court anywhere. Mm -hmm. Football, you have to pitch. have, yeah, you got to have like a league. Um, you know, you got to have all types of stuff to do that. So uh, it was just more accessible to me. And then, you know, after that, I just fell in love and the rest is history, so to speak. Yeah, when I left college, I was the all time leading scorer in um, Pepperdine history. That record has since been broken by my man Kobe Ross, who's actually um, playing in, he's playing in, um, where's he playing? Czech Republic. He's mm -hmm. playing on uh, Nimbo. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, so, so I broke the record and that record had actually stood for 30 years uh, before I broke it. Uh, and it was held by a man named Dane Suttle. Mm -hmm. And... Um, And yeah, so, you know, I broke that record. I think I was second all time in rebounds. Mm -hmm. And I was like top five in uh, free throws and stuff like that. So I had a pretty good career. So um, so it was a point that you thought, okay, did, it can be my you know, professional way to live, like yeah, basketball? Yeah, yeah, I definitely, um, I always had aspirations of playing professionally. Mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously every kid in the United States yeah wants to play in, you know, the NBA, mm -hmm. and so, uh, yeah, I think right around maybe, maybe like my 
sophomore year mm-hmm. or junior year, like that sophomore summer, I really realized like, oh, this could be a thing. Mm-hmm. You know, this could like, I could really make something out of this. So what, what do you put here for our fans if they will want to make it? At home? Yeah. Okay, so you just need an eggplant. So you just cut it? Yeah, yeah, just peel the eggplant, cut mm-hmm. it and put it in the pot. Um, some tomatoes, you de-seed them, so you take all the seeds out because uh, this you'll want it to be, you don't want it to be too watery. Mm-hmm. So you want to take uh, the seeds out. And what spices you added? To so salt, pepper, some cumin, some chili, so some, some chili powder, some paprika, and some curry powder, and a drizzle of olive oil. Okay. And then we're going to put some water in there. Mm-hmm. Put, um, the top on and just let it simmer for about 10 to 15 minutes and after that put some um, tomato paste in there stir it up let it get you know nice and <laughs> thick so to speak and then we're gonna have that with some toasts some some bread some mm-hmm. sugar and uh, some fish was actually and also I forgot to mention that uh, this is what is this I'm blanking. This is a uh, not cilantro. I forget the name of this. Yes, but this Polish name Petruska. Petruska, <laughs> that's what it is. Anyways, back to uh, my career. So after that, I went to I went to France, yeah. Pro B France, where I played for a team called STB Le Havre. Uh, it was a really nice city, uh, reminded me a lot of my college city actually mm-hmm. because we were right by the ocean so like we were right off the coast and uh, yeah it was, a, it was a good city we just you know we had a team that struggled we um, had some coaching changes, player changes throughout the year so it was just it was it was a uh, it was a tough situation overall, but the living there was uh, undeniable. Like especially when it started to get warmer, like mm-hmm. in April, May, when it started to get warmer. Oh man, it was uh, it was incredible. So so this is why you, you you said once that you like hot weather. So this is why you change. To, to, you move your talent to Mexico? <laughs> yeah, so uh, I actually was in the Philippines before that, right before uh-huh. Mexico. But yeah, Mexico was cool too. That was a uh, that was actually interesting. Uh, that was a that was a really interesting place, and it was so close to home. The team that I was playing for was in Mexicali. It was literally maybe like an hour or two. It was like an hour or two flight uh, to the airport. And then it was like a two-hour drive to Mexicali. So uh, the games, you know, my family was able to watch, and they didn't have to like stay up all night. It was just, it was a, it was an interesting situation. It was an interesting situation, but it was cool. You know, I think every part of my journey has been interesting, but you know, it's been dope nonetheless. And all right, so I think we're done. Just gonna put some water in here. Okay. That should be good. So tell me why uh, in your career you didn't decide maybe there wasn't option but what can you say about that that you uh, with your talent which is huge everything everyone knows that you uh, doesn't matter where you played you were one of the best players mm-hmm. so why didn't why you didn't go to the better league you know um, Italian and Tur- Turkish you know better clubs yeah it's just honestly it's just all about uh, opportunity um, you know I've had some opportunities to go to those places but my career's always been um, it's just been a little bit different I had a daughter coming straight out of college so my mindset was always a little bit different um, I just I was always focused on her you know everything has just been about you know my daughter Sanaya and you know providing for her and mm-hmm. giving her um, you know a very fortunate life and given her experiences so yeah I think that I you know I think my talent is undeniable and I think that I've um, deserved opportunities in those other leagues but 
uh, for one reason or another, whether it was, uh, you know, teams wanting you to come play for just the opportunity and not really looking out for you financially or, um, you know, just teams not reaching out or whatever the case may be. Um, you know, it is what it is, but I think I carry that chip with me. And I've carried that chip with me even since college, you know. Uh, I felt like I was one of the better players in my conference and uh, shoot in the country, and it showed, but still felt like I was an underdog. And, you know, I still feel like that uh, here. Well, I'm just uh, slicing up some bread that I'll toast so we can uh, dip it in the zaluk. <laughs> and, yeah, so I'm just going to Stacy, I need to ask you about uh, the derby game because uh, because Kuba Sheng told me uh -huh. that uh, you were talking with Mali before the game uh -huh. and you told to Mali uh, that it wasn't it 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 won't be like normal game that you not noticed that from the first game. Yeah, so basically, uh, Mali was coming back from an injury. Yeah, um, he was dealing with an injury. And that was going to be his first game back. And I was basically just telling him, like, yo, don't go out there unless you're 100% confident, like, unless you're really ready, because it's not going to be a normal game. It's like, you know, rivalry games, derby games in Europe, they're different. And yeah. um, this is the start of the second round. So it's going to be, you know, a little bit more physical. And I think we got to jump on them early. But, you know, it was a physical up and down game. And uh, I was just telling them, like, you know, you just got to be cognizant of that because, you know, you're doing, you're ramping up your activity, you're trying to play, you're trying to play, but um, don't go out there and play if you're not 100% confident because this is going to be, you know, it's going to be a fight. Just like, it'd be no different if we were playing Astro or Anvil or something like that. It's like, yo, be mindful if you're dealing with something because this is going to be a tough game, a very, very tough game. I want, I want to ask you about your... Uh, signature move, like this uh, post move. You are playing this almost <laughs> from the beginning of the season, and I can say that that nobody can stop you. Yeah, it's uh, you know, I uh, it's really just about um, you know, it's just about footwork and just obviously just keeping the defense on their toes, like um, you know, giving them different looks every time, whether it's. You know, you face up jab step, face up go, being able to go uh, on either block. And then at the same time, it's just, you know, giving, you know, taking what the defense gives you. I'm never going to just predetermine my move, but if I, you know, I, I, I know uh, what to do to get my shot off. I know if, uh, you know, if a certain player is playing a certain way, how to get my shot off or counters to that shot. Um, so I'm never just like out there like, oh yeah, you know, I'm gonna just do the same move over and over and over again. That's never, that's never uh, how I approach it. But yeah, I spent a lot of hours, I've been, I spent a lot of hours um, trying to perfect that shot. Mm -hmm. What now? What is, what, what I'm doing? Right? So this is the Zaluk, so now uh, I'm gonna... Mesh it? Mesh it a little bit. After our last game, I noticed that somebody on Twitter uh, wrote something like this that Stacey Davis with this uh, post move shot is playing against the statistics that this is, you know, unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, I think, uh, you know, I... You know, I, in, in modern basketball, this shot is like, how to say, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, no, I know exactly what you mean. I firmly, I don't like uh, analytics. I'm not a guy that likes analytics because um, it's been proven that, especially... Um, and playoff basketball at the end of games, you know, the shot that most teams are going to give teams is the mid-range shot. Mm -hmm. Is the mid-range jumper, whether that's out of the pick and roll or being able to create your own shot, and that's the shot that they give you. So, um, 
those shots are the ones that win games. Not layups, not threes. More than likely, those are the shots that are going to win you games, especially in um, tight contests. So, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't subscribe to statistics at all. Um, I think they help in some facets, but at the end of the day, you know, I'm a basketball player. I just play. You know, mm-hmm. I do it. I do what I do well, and they do what they do well, which is typing on the keyboard. I got surprise. I told you about this. You did. And uh, I got some questions from a person who you know, who you like. Okay. And this person tell me to ask you about where uh, where the best after parties uh, at Pepperdine. Where the best after parties were at Pepperdine. Uh, the best after parties at Pepperdine. Whew. You know who you know who asked you? Had to be Ant. Anthony Island. Uh was either at Doug's, uh was either at Doug's, I think that was his name, it was either Doug's or was at the water polo house or maybe at Duke's. One of those three. What did he say? He's just asking. Oh he was just asking. We need to we need to ask Anthony to you know write us on on Twitter. Yes. If, if he agreed. Oh the best player chef in yeah. Poland? Me. Yeah. By far, yeah. I'm, yes. Yeah, because we've got evidence that you are cooking. No, yeah. Nobody this, showed it. Yeah, this is, uh, this is like an undeniable fact. It's me. Okay, and last. What is your yours go to dance when prepping a good meal? My, ooh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, you gotta get the dug in there some. Ooh. Especially when I'm hungry. You know I gotta hit that one. Okay. Can you say something more about your how to say connection with what well, Ant? Yeah. Yeah. So Ant was a junior when I was a freshman. Mm-hmm. And I remember the first time we played, man. I had uh, we were playing under our rivals, and I think I had made one or two free throws, but we were up. It was only like one second left. We got the rebound. He was like, "Yeah, you gonna miss this." I missed. He got it. Shot it full court. Almost made it. But uh, you know, he always showed love. Like Ant showed love since I was since I first got to college, and that was uh, that was dope to me. That was really really dope to me. So you know, we've connected uh, outside of uh, being basketball players, but you know, just you know, he does um, his his wellness journey. Um, I believe he he does yoga as well. So um, you know, connecting on levels like that outside of basketball is like it's very meaningful for me. I'm a very uh, relationship type of person, so. Like I said, Ant always showed love from the beginning, from from like my day, my day one at that pet. And uh, you know, it's just been it's been reciprocated, you know, since uh, from that time on. You know, it's all it's always been love between us two. And this is is that look? Nice. Yes. Yeah. I knew y'all were coming into my house, so I made you some treats, man. <laughs> These are like yeah. healthy homemade butterfingers. I know y'all don't have butterfingers. Is something like chocolate bar in the states? Or? It's like a peanut butter crispy chocolate bar. Okay. Yes, in the states. Yeah. So it's not popular here in Poland. No, no, no. Definitely not popular here in Poland at all. Do you miss this? You know, United uh, United States cuisine like yeah, I mean like I like, make most of my stuff so yeah but I mean like snacks which you cannot buy here I don't really eat a lot of like candy and stuff like that even when I'm back home so I wouldn't really say that I miss that too much but you know just I just miss like family and yeah. being able to see my friends and stuff like that but like cuisine and everything you know I can I can even make most of that stuff at home like even Chick-fil-A I'll make a Chick-fil-A sandwich at my house mm-hmm. so all right so usually Mm-hmm. They put the zaluk in a bowl, but um, because I only have small bowls, I think it would be better if I plate it on a plate. And I believe the way that they serve this is like a kind of like a dip, so mm-hmm. you can use it. We'll have it with some bread. But you can also just eat it by itself. So I don't think traditionally they eat them with um, the fish. Yeah, they don't eat them with the fish. Oops. But this is your version. This is the Stacy Davis version. So 
So you need to change the name of this dish. Yeah, probably. Um, but yeah, sardines are very, very good. I know a lot of people don't like them, but oh wow, that's going to mess up my presentation. <laughs> but sardines are high in protein, have omega-3s, and they're low in mercury. So they're good. So if you are playing basketball, you need to eat it. Yes. Okay. I had it. I will take it here. Yeah. Mm. Is it good? Mm. <laughs> it is good, yeah. All right. Well. Potwierdzam. I will tell in Polish. Potwierdzam. Stacy Davis to najlepszy szef, koszykarz. Best chef in Poland. Mm -hmm. um, all right. Now that I need to eat it here because. I don't want to, you know, make a, how to say, mess. Mess, yeah. Now you gotta have some dessert. So I cut up a little piece, but this is like a... Like, like in normal uh, restaurant. Yes. First the dish and then dessert. So like a... I what? will eat it like this. Alright. Yeah, it, it's good. Crunchy. So how you made it? Uh, so, you'll be surprised some date sh syrup, mm -hmm. um, you can use that or you can use maple syrup, mm -hmm. just some peanut butter, you mix that together, take some cornflakes, <laughs> you crush these down, mix it all up, uh, you form a little, like a square, however you like, you can form them in the balls if you want, and then you take some, uh, take some chocolate, culinary chocolate, mm -hmm. And you melt it down. You first you freeze the uh, the peanut butter mixture in the in the freezer for about ten minutes. You melt the chocolate. You coat it over, and you put that in the refrigerator for as long as you want them to stay cool. After that, you're good to go. Last Should question before it will be cold: mm -hmm. uh, Is it the plan for uh, retirement of basketball? To be a chef. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. Some we'll, small bistro? Yeah, yeah. We'll see. I don't know. I, I kind of just like doing it in my spare time. I don't know if I would like doing it as a <laughs> job, you know, cooking all day. But um, it's definitely something I enjoy. Like, I love cooking for my family. Uh, mm -hmm. That's like, it's probably like my favorite pastime. Cooking for my loved ones is always, is always good to me. So that was really good. I... You didn't expect. I surprised my own self. <laughs> I wish I could. Yeah, we were talking during your uh, dinner break, lunch break, that you met the Polish guy during your career. Uh -huh. You playing against before you joined uh, Pol. Yes. You remember? Yeah, yeah. Big guy. He said uh, his favorite protein was chicken. <laughs> chicken sure. Karnowski. Yeah. yeah there, was like a, a, there was an interview um, where I think the interviewer was a girl. She asked him like, "What's his favorite protein?" But it sounded like she said, what's your favorite protein? Mm -hmm. And he said, chicken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I played against Shimmick. I remember uh, before he got to Gonzaga, like watching his highlights, I was like, man, very, very skilled. I'm like, how do you stop somebody like that? You know, really tall, really, yeah. really big. Um, could shoot a mid-range shot. Uh, it was like very skilled around the basket. Like he was just a really, really good player. Here it's uh, game pot from... PS5, yes. you probably, it will be a joke for sure, but you're probably one of the 10 people who have play PlayStation 5 in Czech, <laughs> <laughs> because this is not like a common uh, uh, game console right now. Right. So, what are your favorite uh, titles? All-time favorite game would be Fallout 4, no, 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 all-time favorite game is God of War, by, by far, that's okay. the best game I've ever played in my life. Second would probably be Fallout 4. Uh, Ghost of Tsushima was good and uh, yeah those are probably like the honestly God of oh and Kingdom Hearts I, I know also that you are maybe not a good word huge fan of uh, MCU Marvel yeah yeah. Uh, what uh, hero is your favorite uh, well before I go into who my favorite I just have to say Batman sucks. <laughs> um, so, 
now that that's clear, my favorite would probably be. I mean, all time favorite in the MCU would be Wolverine. Um, but um, if I had to pick in the cinematic world, I would say maybe like Doctor Strange. Oh, this came winner? Yeah. Yes. I definitely remember this. Mutta me Lahti on onnistunut hidastamaan PC Nokia hyökkäyksiä koko illan. Jolen, onko me kapteeni se, joka ratkaisee? Seitsemän sekuntia. Davis, Davis. Näette haastamaan. Jolen on korin alla. Korin, mutta heitto jää uupumaan. Davis, kolme pistettä ja upottaa. Davis, Stacy Davis upottaa kolme pisteen heiton. Ja nyt lähtee koko kokoonpano tuonne Davisin luokse. Oli pahan. That's funny, man. I definitely remember this. Look at Sean. Can <laughs> you say, say something more about this? Oh, man. Uh, I think that was like... It was definitely my first game when it hit as a professional, but... Yeah, back before the game, um, I think we were up in the play before that. We had like a defensive breakdown. John Tyler gets it. John Taylor, I played against him at CSUN. Gets a dunk. Thinking all, oh, but the game was over. And uh, crazy enough, I had gotten to the gym like I usually do two hours before, and I worked on the same shot. And I knew as soon as I shot that it was going in. But uh, man, that was that was that was a crazy. I, I definitely remember that one. Man. I appreciate y'all spending the day with me, man. Uh, it's been a joy. I hope that I inspired some of y'all to make that Zaluk spell check that for me. But yeah, it's been a wonderful day.